Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of Dark Souls PvP and another weapon showcase. The last time you guys voted that you wanted to see me use the four-pronged plow. So I, of course, I listened and I'm using it now. So right off the bat we can see that this weapon has a bit of a problem with its R2 attacks. You fall over. Now the first time I did it, he was actually hitting me while I was down. You can be hit while you're down. Interestingly though, you cannot be kicked while you're down. So, I guess that's kind of a good thing, but it's more of a bad thing, because as the next fight shows, you can actually be backstabbed while you're down. It will literally pull you back up into a backstab if they get in the proper positioning for it. So it's not good, and right here is when he does it. Just not a problem at all. It just goes right in for that backstab, pulls me right up off the ground, and yeah. And I guess he's not too happy with it. I'm like, eh, whatever. And then we just keep fighting, because, I mean, it was my fault. I should have known better. This was actually my first time using the weapon. That first fight I had was my very first time. This is the second. So this video is pretty much a huge learning curve for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Overall, though, it's a pretty fun weapon to use, and it's relatively easy to learn how to use. This weapon, the four-pronged plow, has a weight of 5.5. It's a thrusting weapon, obviously. It's counted as a spear. At plus 15, I think it has a D with strength and a B with dexterity. Um, something like that. And overall, for me, it does around 400, or not 400, 380 some odd damage, which is about the same as the winged spear, which, when one-handed, has the same R2 attack as this one one-handed. So they're similar in that respect. Also, in their reach, it's also very similar. And he got me right there with a nice little ravioli step, turn around, swing, running attack -y like thing and he's waving to you guys so yeah <laughs> um, this person right here I actually had a few matches with them and they all lasted so long like they were going upwards of minute and a half two minute matches and you know I would have liked to include all of the fights I had but they were just boring I mean it was just lasting so long it was just boring but uh, right there, back, I got a counterattack on them. <clears throat> I got a counterattack on them that did around 450 damage, which is about average with what I'm getting for counterattacks with this weapon. So that's really not bad. Honestly, I think it's really pretty good considering it's a spear, it's got such a fast speed, and I mean, that can really stack up damage pretty fast. And right there, just ran into a uh, Wrath of the Gods, just ran right into it. I don't even know why. And running attack for the kill. Give him a nice little wave, and move on to the next. So, overall, with this weapon, its pros, I would have to say, it's got a decent weight for a spear. It's got decent reach. It has a decent move set. That running attack is good in a few instances where, say, the person is rolling straight backwards, like that guy right there. If I had done the running attack, I would have just followed him and got him. I would have got some instability damage, is what I believe we're calling it now. When someone, when someone is mid-roll or has a broken guard, I believe we're calling that instability damage now. Um, yeah. So. If someone's rolling straight back, you can get them with that R2 attack pretty easily. If you're not fighting someone who's rolling straight back and you're just going to do it at someone, I highly recommend doing it when you're near a wall. Because if you're near a wall when you do it, and they move out of the way, you'll hit the wall, it'll deflect off the wall, and you won't fall over. So you're going to be in a better, you're going to be in better shape than you were if you had fallen over and you got backstabbed. And right there, I saw how little health he had, and I knew either I would get hit once and kill him, or I'd get hit 
and die. And either way, he would die because I threw uh, Lloyd's at him. So, I decided to try and get him with that R2, and it worked out pretty good for me. That was actually the first person I had killed with the R2 attack, and that was one of the first times I hit someone with it. And I believe I actually hit this guy with the R2 attack, too. I'm not positive, though. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I've gone over the pros of the weapon being it's got decent reach, it can have decent damage. With the Leo Ring, it does decent damage. I mean, obviously, it's a thrust weapon, so you've got your Leo Ring damage bonus. And actually, right here, I do get him with that. I don't know how much damage it did. I couldn't see it, but I got him with it, so that's what matters. Um, so you've got your Leo Ring damage, you've got your decent reach, you've got your decent damage overall. You've got your interesting move set. It's not a bad move set. You've got your D and B scaling at plus 15. Um, what else was there? It's a spear, so obviously you can hold your shield up and poke. That's always helpful. And actually, it does save me in not this fight, but I think it might be the next or the one after that. I don't remember exactly which one it was. But, yeah. Now, as far as the cons go, the main con, in my opinion, is the fact that if you miss your two-handed R2 attack, you're going to fall over, you can be hit while you're down, you can get backstabbed while you're down, and that's that's just bad. You don't want that at all, because there's nothing you can do about it. Like, if someone's backstab fishing, you can counter backstab fish. But you're on the ground with this thing if you miss its R2. There is nothing you can do. It just it doesn't work. There's nothing you can do. And they can do stuff like that. They've got time to get in a swing and backstab you. And the time it takes you to get back up. I mean, if this weapon had invincibility frames, for lack of a better term, like, say, you know, how you have them when you just were backstabbed and you're on the ground, you can't get hit again. If this weapon had those sort of invincibility frames when you were on the ground, then it would be an awesome, awesome weapon. I'd be using this thing all the time because that would be fun. Just do that R2 attack all day and they wouldn't be able to do anything about it because, hey, you've got invincibility frames. Either you hit them or they can't hit you. So, I mean, I wouldn't complain. Um, in the beginning of this fight, I got some... Leo Ring counter attack damage, and then I got another Leo Ring counter, followed by a regular poke, doing a total of 600 some odd damage. Um, overall, did about a thousand damage so far to him. And really, the damage on this thing comes out pretty fast. I mean, I guess that's just a typical spear thing. I don't really use spears that often, and to the extent that I do use them, I never use them with the Leo Ring. I actually use them the most when I'm using the Man Serpent Greatsword, and I've got the Winged Spear in the offhand, or not in the offhand, but as the backup weapon, and I switch between the Winged and Partisan mid-fight. So that's really to the extent that I use spears. I'm not a good spear user at all, by any means. I'm too aggressive, and I'm always right in their face with it, but I don't need to be because I'm using a spear. I've got the distance and I always forget that. So, yeah. That's just me sort of babbling on about why I'm a bad spear user. Now this guy, I'm fighting him again. I invaded him again. He was, I believe, the third or fourth person I had fought with this weapon. And as you can see, I've had pretty much a significant improvement. This was over a one hour play session before I went to work one day. And really, the learning curve with this weapon is not too bad. Spears really aren't too bad of a weapon to learn how to use. It's just a matter of learning when to use certain special moves, like the R2 attacks of this weapon, that make it really kind of difficult. And it's this fight I was talking about with the pokiness saving me, getting him for his last little one health, and going on to the next fight, taking him down. Alright, so this is the last fight. I'm just going to wrap things up real quick, go over the pros and cons again. So the pros being it's got decent reach, Leo ring counterattack damage is pretty good. Um, speed, obviously it's a spear, it's got good speed, you can poke behind a shield. 
plus 15, it's got C and D scaling, or, or B and D scalings, dexterity and strength. Um, cons, that R2 attack, man. That R2 attack is the biggest con of this weapon. Other than that, great weapon. I'll be using it more often and hopefully landing more of those R2 attacks. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.